Peace, peace, peace. Welcome to the Scrap and Roll MMA podcast. I'm your host, Sky. That's your host, Jace. CJ in the building. We are back live in effect. Another week, more violence happened this weekend, um, but nothing too crazy. How did you guys feel about the card? If you guys watched the card that everybody was talking bad about. Go ahead, Jace. Listen, I'm going to keep it 1,000. Every time people talk about, oh, this card is weak, this card is stand, blah, blah, blah. I just feel like you get the best scraps because these people are trying to really fucking put their name on the map, finally get into the show. They want people to remember their name and shit. A couple of people got dusted the fuck up as well. There was a couple of just <laughs> fire ass fights on there. Your boy Jim Miller shows he is still tough as nails. Damn, son. Real quick, did you agree with the decision? Yes, I did. It was a good fight. It was a close so fight. 30 27? No, oh, that part, no. No, no, not that's the overall decision. <laughs> yeah, that's wild to me. Yeah, yeah. to me, uh, I enjoyed the fights, you know. Uh, a lot of new up-and-comers coming through there. We had some vicious uh, stoppages. Dude cut his eyebrow open. Uh, shout out to Blanchfield. It was a good fight. Any fights on Saturday, bro, I'm going to enjoy it. So everybody that be hating, don't watch the fights and stop complaining. Do something else with your life then. Facts. <laughs> Did you see? Did you see the cut in Dana's story? Like he, mm -hmm. so apparently Dana was like, he didn't think that the fight should have been stopped. So he asked the doctor to send like the pictures afterwards. And so Dana posted it and was like, I was absolutely wrong. Like it was kind of like his vein was showing and it was disgusting. Yeah. Huh. yeah. Um, Aaron Blanchfield has arrived. Stepping in, uh, you know, Jessica and Draw stepped in late notice, the fighter, bad decision. I mean, yeah. they were banging though. They, that that first, first round. round. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, we see you, Blanchfield. How do you guys think she uh, does against Shevchenko? CJ? Or uh, possibly a Grasso. Or Grasso, yeah. That's what I've been telling people that too. Everybody wants to jump to the stick before the fights even happen. You know what I'm saying? You know, Valentina's been dominant for so long, so people just automatically put her ahead and you know my rule anything could happen in, in the fight so we're not gonna put anything past her but let's say valentina does go there i think she does have a shot to win like i always said anybody does but i also think her striking was all right against andrage but the thing i picked up on her she's kind of slow her striking is slow you know what yeah. i'm saying and um and i don't like doing mma math this is gonna happen that's gonna happen because it's a fight anything could happen so I think Valentina's a little bit more seasoned than her. She can grapple just as well with her, and her striking is a lot better than hers. I'm happy she won, though. I'm happy. Bl I was going for Andrade, but I'm super happy that Blanchfield won because, like you said, when Izzy fought, we need a little switch up and a little new blood coming around here. So shout out to Blanchfield, a young gun, with 23 years old, putting on for herself. So that was a good showing for her. Yeah. Facts and we, as we know, Shevchenko. I mean, she's just so fast. She is so fast. She's so quick, and she throws everything with accuracy and wanting to end the fight. Like she's never just in there throwing a lazy kick. Like have you ever just yeah. seen Shevchenko like throw like a lazy little filler kick? Like no, everything she throws, she's like ha, ah! like <laughs> like she's going at the bag. Oh man, I can't wait for that Grasso fight. Um, and then one thing I do want to say, because, uh, last time we were on here, we were talking to, we were talking to Damien about his, uh, teammate, Jordan Wright. And I was hoping that Damien was going to be able to be here today, but he wasn't because I need to ask him. And I texted him in the middle of watching this. Why was Jordan Wright getting pinched up on, on the side of the cage, being elbow, nasty, being punched, controlled and looking up at the clock and smiling? I'm like, do you like what what is going on i thought that this was absolutely ridiculous like this is not like he was getting his ass beat and he's looking up at the monitor at himself i don't know what he was looking at he was smiling the whole time it's just like this isn't cute I, I, did y'all see that yeah it looked like he was just, probably just happy to be in the octagon you know <laughs> like but it was kind of weird. It was kind of weird. He, he and he looks like he has a lot of skills. He swept on his feet, but like, bro, what are you doing? I mean, he finished uh, uh, your boy, uh, the dude with the viral kick, Joaquin Buckley. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Buckley. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, and then speaking of that, real quick, because we're not gonna go too deep into this card, but William Knight needs his ass beat. I'm sorry, oh, he already man. got a beat. He already got a beat, but that performance. 
That's not black history. So, right? Sky, you are yeah. <laughs> Hey, can we send them to the other side and get somebody else? <laughs> can we yeah. train them in in the subject? Hey, train he them. ain't invited to the barbecue. My God, what was he doing? What the was Negro doing? draft. <laughs> hey, can we trade him in for somebody else? <laughs> hey. Oh, no. We're gonna be God gonna damn. But, but the sad thing about it is, like, you get a leg kick, right? It's like, you're going to lose the fight. You might as well just take a chance, brother, at this point. It just, just go out swinging, bro. Like, damn. All the muscles for nothing. All the muscles for nothing. I just, mm. and, 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 you know, this was his third loss in a row. His coach is doing everything he can and, to like, hey, like, go, dude, go. Like, third loss in a row that he's looked bad. I mean, he's definitely getting cut. I, I don't, I don't, I don't see any other way about it, you know. And just his lackadaisical attitude. Didn't try to switch stands. Didn't try to just hey throw caution to the wind. Yeah. Throw bombs. Anything. That was. It was hard. It was like embarrassing to watch. I'm like, dude, like somebody's gonna see this and be like, oh, this is MMA. This is what they do. Like, you know what I mean? Like that doesn't help bring in fans. Um, before we hopped on the call, uh, Jace was talking about Jim Miller versus Alexander Hernandez, which was a banger. Jim Miller, yeah, dude. Shout out to the old vet, Jim Miller. You know, I love me some oldies, so shout out to him. Still putting on. Oh, I wish he would have eked it out against uh, Hernandez because I can't stand him. Yeah, can't stand him. But, well, he hurt him a couple times. Yeah, I was about to say that. Hernandez should have been like, he's fighting these older dudes. You should be taking them up out of there. <laughs> like, come on, man. But shout out to Jim Miller. Yeah, he almost got done with for just from those leg kicks by themselves. Just mm -hmm. every whop, whop, whop. Fucking wild. Yeah. yeah. And then last but not least, Simba Grimbo. Uh, Next time, you need to put some lotion on, my guy. I'm I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. Oh, Against him, like one of my friends texted me and was like, it looks like he rolled in chalk before he made the walk. That's true. Why was your boy that actually? <laughs> it's like you know, like when you go to the pool, like, okay, for y'all that don't know, black people when they go in and get in the pool afterward, that if you don't like take a shower and put some lotion on, um, you're going to be ashy. Especially me and people that are my complexion or darker, like you're going to be super ashy. That's how he came out looking. It was <laughs> that's not yes. black history money. <laughs> hey, Sky texted me. He she was like, he ashy as hell. And I was doing something else and I looked up. I said, God damn, fuck God, this guy. Damn, <laughs> and you you got tripping, it. man. You tripping right now. I was like, maybe he wanted the ash on his knees, you know, keep it rough. So he throw those knees or something. And like, pause. Hey, and then I'm like, and then he gets tapped out. You're like, bro, come on, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then this upcoming weekend, we have another card. Like, after we, you guys, after we get past this weekend, it's nothing but, like, block out my weekends. Leave me alone. Don't call me. Like, you know what I'm doing for the next seven, eight hours on a Saturday. Uh, but this next upcoming card, it's not too bad. You know, uh, yeah. Nikita Kreloff versus Ryan's fans. Ryan's fans get an opportunity to. To, uh, to get knocked out. Got it. Check. Oh, oh you, you got uh, Kreloff winning? Easy, easy money. Easy. Why is that? He's just the you know, span is just like he, he's almost he's not on that level, but he's going towards that just OSP level for me, where he just goes out there and he's just I, I don't know what he's thinking half the time. Well, he is being coached by my favorite coach, Say Saud. Uh, he, you know, after he knocked out Dominic Gray, as he said, he's finally back in, the, like, in the gym, consistently training and game planning for a fight. So maybe we see a different version of him. Um, who knows? You know, Andre Muniz. Do not sleep on Andre Muniz. Like, this dude, since he, I don't think he's lost a fight since he's been in the UFC. He's super nasty on the ground, going up against Brandon Allen. Um, Brandon won in his last fight, too. He's good on the ground as well. Um, yeah, I mean, there's some good, the return of Tatiana Suarez, oh, you know. Yeah. She's the wrestler that everybody was talking about that could go for Shevchenko prior to her um, having she injuries pregnant. with her. She got pregnant too. She got pregnant? Mm -hmm. Dang. She had a baby hey. with Tashi Mix. Hey, when you out there, uh, and <laughs> <laughs> when you got to live, live your best life. <laughs> hey, the grind don't stop. <laughs> Some weak. Uh, you know. Um, oh, your boy, Twerk King, Jordan Levitt. 
and I that's where God. <laughs> that's where <our> God. <laughs> what a loser! Why he gotta be a loser? Well, for one, he lost to potty. 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 Who's not a body? They're calling him Patty the Delusional. Yeah, facts. We that boy ain't been chirping at all. We ain't heard nothing. From Listen, him. can we just talk about this for a second? Uh, you know, the UFC, which is under Endeavor, you know, a multi billion dollar company. Can we get these motherfuckers some pictures? God damn, bro. They take the pictures. Uh, they should take the pictures tomorrow. So they'll update them. Gotcha. And then, oh, day. Oh, day. Oh, day. My guy, all day. Uh, if you guys haven't already, he actually just came out with a new episode on his podcast with the champion, Jamal Hill. It was good, um, too. Yeah, it is good. So make sure that you check that out. Um, Jamal Hill living his best life. Like, because if you go back and you watch his very, O'Day's very first episode was with Jamal Hill and Joaquin Buckley. And that one was fire. And, you know, Jamal Hill's on there talking about all these, these, all the things that he wanted. And the next thing you know, within a couple of months, boom, now he's the champion. Of, so definitely check that out. Um, I'm definitely going to be going for O'Day. Uh, Charles Johnson is stepping in short notice. That's the dude with the little, I don't know what they call it, but that little thing on the back of your hair, like your head shit. I don't like it. Yeah. And it's be like, he like a, like a, like a diet version of Bobby Green a little bit. The way he, I feel that. And stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like he, he likes to try to do the Philly roll, but Mm -hmm. can't nobody do it like, uh, Floyd Floyd Green. (laughs) Well, yeah, but, but, but this is MMA. Come on. Fair. Fair. I was just seeing it. Automatic knee jerk reaction. Yeah, facts, facts. Um, so yeah, that's that's the card. Like, just briefly going over, we're not gonna spend too much time on it because, let's be honest, if if we come back and there's some bangers. Oh, speaking of that, Jace was not here last weekend. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the party. Let's go. Right. Anything you'd like to say? So I'm just going to summarize the main event as saying like this. Um, Islam got the decision. Volkanovski won the fight. Can I point out something? By all means. Do you recall during the Jose, first of all, this is not an degradation. I can't believe it. Do you recall? But during Jose Aldo versus Marab, Right. Uh, Jose Aldo was being held up against the fence and he was yawning and he was playing into it and he was doing nothing but being controlled. And during that fight, I think it might have been D.C. or one of the uh, analysts was like, yeah, you can do all of those antics and do all of that. But like you're losing the fight, like you're still not getting yourself out of this position to where you're in trouble. That's how I felt about Volkanovski fourth round with Islam on his back you know, yelling and screaming and making faces and doing all of that. It's like, you're doing that for showmanship because you can't get out of the position. And I know that you guys are all like entertained by it and like, oh my God, and this happened. But it's like, the reality is, is they can't get out of it. The one thing that I did like about Volkanovski is that he acknowledged that. And he acknowledged the fact that like, his job is to get out of that position. Uh, One thing that Jason and I talked about, about that fight specifically was about the fourth round and was about, how those you know how it should be scored and he said to me that because you guys know that i hate mark Matson because he's a lay and pray type of guy um that somebody being on your back is the same thing my argument is that no it's not the same thing because somebody being on your back is a dominant position right it's completely different than me laying on top of you not doing anything i'm threatening with the choke but also, you cannot get out of this position. Having your back being taken in any situation, somebody on your back is the most vulnerable you'll ever be, period. Um, especially in prison. Especially in prison. Facts. Facts. Um, and so, uh, immediately after the fight was over, Jace felt like, Jace felt like um, him and the 300 people at the bar, they thought that Volkanovski won. Um, I was clear that Islam won. I think CJ said last week that he was clear that um, that Islam won. Also, the majority of the internet believes that Volkanovski won. Uh, I wouldn't go that far. Uh, and also yeah. one other thing, one other thing is that when they do so after every fight, the media member scored right. So when Volkanovski beat Max Holloway in the second fight, 
Only three judges gave it to, no, no, nobody gave it to Volkanovsky. Everybody went Holloway. On this one, everybody went Islam except for four. So to the people, to the fans who were excited to see that fifth round, the fifth round was really great for Volkanovsky, who were excited, who wanted it to be towards him. Um, I think that they seen what they wanted to see, you know, here he did much better than majority of us thought he was going to do. And you guys wanted him to win. But the reality is, is that he, he didn't won. win the second round. He won the second round. Okay. But, you know, again, uh, he lost the decision. You know what I mean? Which is fine. But, you know, sometimes you can lose the decision and still win the war. And I think in this case, and as we can see, and I know you already got into it last week with like the UFC rankings, they felt the same way. And those media members because as we say the it's done not by the ufc but by certain uh people of the media that they felt that volkanowski won the fight as well if not he wouldn't have switched um i yeah and i believe that that's number one bullshit too <laughs> i do i do i i think you know they they knock kamaro down and put leon on top and it's like really leon edwards over kamaro's he but, did knock the nigga out of space. Like you can't, you can't but, just but, sidetrack. He was still losing he the was, whole he, fight. He was losing the fight until he wasn't. <laughs> Izzy was winning the fight but, until he but just the, wasn't. But the point of, but the, but yeah, and they just switch Izzy to being on top of Alex. So before the point is, is that like, oh no, Alex, yeah, Izzy is on top of Alex, and it's like, okay, he TKO'd him. So how come Izzy? How come uh, Alex isn't over Izzy? How I come I, Alex is at number three? I guess I would say bullshit. the reason why that would be would because that I mean uh, yes, um, Leon Edwards was losing the fight, but also in the same breath, like he came into that fight on what like a twelve fight win streak. You know what I mean? Um, do I believe that um, Leon Edwards is a better fighter than Usman? Absolutely not. I'm not going to throw that smoke. You know what I mean? I speak all facts. Uh, that being said, though, stop it. That being said, though, you know what I mean? He knocked this nigga into oblivion. If like, if I am Leon Edwards, I show up to the press conference with a t-shirt of me knocking his ass out. Like, <laughs> that's, that's what I do, you know? Because if y'all remember on the press conference, it, your boy Uzmah went wild. <laughs> hey, man, I like you. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to take care of him for you. <laughs> Talking about Jorge, you know what I mean? Like, I'm going to take care of him. You know, I like this little dude. That's my little bro. I'll take care of you for you, so. You know, again, as uh, as we would say, or as Max Holloway would say, it is what it is. Um, that got that shirt on right now. It is what it is. Dang. Um, I, I, it is what it is. But I and a lot of the people in the MMA community believe that Volkanovski won, and hopefully, and hopefully, they just run it back immediately. So you would prefer them to run it back rather than Volkanovski going and defending his title like he said he would? A hundred percent. Why? It's more, well, for one, it's more compelling. You know what I mean? Because regard, like the simple fact that we are having a debate about who won the fight, like that automatically spawns controversy. You know, controversy equals cha-ching. I think from a business standpoint, yeah, it definitely makes more sense. But for me... Um, I want Benil Daryush to have an opportunity, and I think that Yair Rodriguez deserves an opportunity to fight as well. Cool. Um, and I think that they go ahead, CJ. Before we go anywhere else, you gonna stop disrespecting the Mexican fighters, Jace? Hey. You gonna stop switching up on the Mexican fighters, Jace? I've been waiting for you to come back, Jace. That's two times in a row. Two times, two times, two times in a row that you didn't switched up. No, I'm looking blessed. <laughs> Shout out to my boy Yair. Shout out to Brandon Moreno. Viva Mexico, perros. And you switched up at the last second. You better not do it again. <laughs> it is what it is. You know what I mean? Yo, I fuck with the Mexican, Mexican people. You know, my favorite food, my. Mexican people are my favorite food. You know, Mexican people are my favorite people in the world. I love them. your favorite food. Yeah, he wild well, right now. You know, <laughs> down to TJ eating the wrong stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of that, okay, I just want to be a fly. Uh, Hold on for a second. I gotta laugh about this. 
Oh my god, can't <laughs> fucking Christmas. <laughs> or if you go down to TJ Eaton sometimes, you better cancel Christmas. The baby boy ain't gonna make it home. Shit. Oh no, not at all. <laughs> oh my god. Um, I just want to be a fly on the wall uh, watching CJ watch yeah. Valentina Shevchenko versus Alexa Grasso. Uh, I don't. I'm, I'm gonna be. It's gonna be tight. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's gonna be tight. But like I said last time, huh? I'm just saying, like, what are you going to do? Because we know on this pod, like CJ's house is House Chevchenko. He's going to ride for Valentina until the wheels fall off. But he loves his Mexican fighters. I yeah. I think everybody likes Alexa Grasso. Yeah, you know, she's a yeah. good fighter. I think it's one of those things that I want Valentina to go as far as possible as she can. Is, is win as much as you can, break records, do as much as you can until she gets stopped. Because Grasso is still young. She'll get her shots again. You know what I'm saying? So I just like greatness as well. So push the support as far as she can. And then if, if she gets knocked out, I'm uh, not knocked out. If she gets knocked off, I'll, I'll be happy for Grasso, though. You know what I'm saying? There's no hey, There's these two fighters. I both I love both of them. So so I'm mad. So it's almost for you, CJ, then um, like a um, Jamal Hill and Glover where you feel like, yeah. yeah, like I fuck with them both. I'm hoping for Glover, though, just because he is older and you know Jamal Hill will have more yeah, like shot, and yeah. more opportunity. Correct. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Got you, got so you. I'm going I'm to be up there like this, holding tight. I hope it's a good scrap. I hope Grasso brings her A game. I hope Valentina comes with her A game. And it's it's on the card with who? John Jones and Gunn? John Jones. <laughs> Uh, yeah, higher profile. So let's save it for next week. Let's we'll save it for next week. <laughs> we'll we're in the John Jones talk. A John Jones uh, talk, man. I cannot wait hey, to TikTok go I've been going crazy, man. I went live earlier today and people are going nutsos for that. It's so split on how we, you know what? Come back. Come back, you weirdos. Come back. I know. I, know. Back. I, know. Uh, I, I, I cannot wait. We are just days and weeks out. From the return of the John Jones, I mean, what's the press conference gonna look like? Like, what's gonna like? Oh my God! You know. Then on top of that, let's get into some tough business because over the weekend, you know, job. Listen, the show just started filming. It is already drama, already drama. Supposed, supposedly, Conor McGregor comes in with three guys and kicks three guys out. Conor came out and said. Nah, that didn't happen. I only came with one guy. I only know one guy on the show. That was his words. Um, but one of the guys that that actually got kicked out is uh, um one of the fighters that I know that I'm on the when I on the Ode Osborne podcast. I was on there with him. Um, he dates Cynthia Galvia has a fight coming up. Mitch Ramirez. Um, and so he just posted today, you know, about it or whatever. Um, and so that you know, I felt super bad for him and super bad for any. Even the other two guys that I don't know, because like it sucks. Apparently, they have been like in an uh, what's it called? They had been in a hotel for like a whole week, getting ready for this fight, and then all of a sudden you find out you're not gonna be on it. Like this is gonna be one of the biggest uh, tough seasons ever. It's being showed on the actual ESPN channel. It has Conor McGregor and, and Michael Chandler, and then like you thinking you at least get some exposure, you gonna have a lot of time, and then like you just cut like that. How y'all feel? Yeah, that's kind of foul. So it was fighters. It was three fighters that were already on the show. What guy? They didn't say what guys that he had coming in. No, the double champ does what the double champ wants. Hey, that's Red literally night. what he did. Red panty night. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, it does suck. You know, if it is true, all this is allegations. You know, what I mean, we don't truly know. You know, but at the end of the day, I mean. I'm a savage. So whatever the fuck it takes to get Conor McGregor on the show, I'm with it. And yes, it sucks for these opportunities, but even with his people, it's still their opportunity too. So someone else's dream, you know what I mean? That being said, I mean, I cannot fucking wait. I haven't watched, and Sky knows, I haven't watched Tough in years. I'm going to be tuned in 100%. But do you think it's gonna be that turned up though? It's on ESPN. They don't be letting a lot of stuff slide like that over there with the Disney Network. You think it's gonna be fire like that? It's gonna be on there. Yeah. It's it, 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 the double champ. That's the double champ wants to do red panty night, baby. Yeah, I, I really do. Uh, one because like 
it, it's Connor. And even anything that Connor does, even if he's just like making fun of how short Michael Chandler is, like it doesn't have to be like super, uh, you know, R rated or raunchy or anything like that in order for it to be on the show. Like Connor just talking and being his normal crazy self is funny. Like he just says shit. Like he he has a he he has a uh, um he he has the it factor. He has a presence. He has an yeah. aura. You know what I mean? There's very there's very few people in the fight game. I would argue, really, the only people who have it a hundred percent would be Connor and then the Gypsy King himself, Tyson Fury. Um, nice. Below that is like the Izzy's, you know what I mean, of the world. But like Connor and Tyson, like when they open their mouth, I'm I'm listening to every word they're saying. Didn't know where you were going with the open the mouth, but I'm happy you went that direction. <laughs> hey, Sky bringing it today, bro. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's been a while. Um, yeah. Pause. <laughs> Why are we sharing our sexual life here? <laughs> I'm sorry, Cobweb Queen. I mean, Sky. <laughs> Like and, and and the crazy thing is, is that because we are brothers and sisters, people just don't get it. But it's just, it's all right. Um, and yeah, we're so, not from West Virginia. No, <laughs> at all. Um, but yeah, so I'm absolutely excited for tough the drama that's already going on. Like it just feels like this show isn't even going to come out until May, and I can guarantee you there's going to be much more drama, um, going on that's going to be popping up. One thing I did want to point out is Dana White has not been at any fight, including Australia. And I remember, I know, uh, Jace, you were one of those people that was like, there needs to be punishment for the actions and blah, 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 blah. Wait a second, wait a second. I don't sound like that. Okay, if I sound like that, I'm going to kill myself today. Just one bass in my voice now. <laughs> um, and so people wanted some type of action. Well, now he hasn't been to any of the fights, right? So... Say, if it were to come out that he was being quote unquote reprimanded um, and has to take X amount, had to take 30, 60 days or however many days, 90 days, whatever, would you feel like it was just or would you still be upset because they didn't tell you that he was being reprimanded? They just reprimanded him because no one's talking about it. Yes. For me personally, mm -hmm. I would be, I would still be upset because I mean, part of the quote unquote punishment is like the, the, the public shame in the arena, if that makes sense, you know, um, because I mean, he still has showed up to certain press conferences, you know what I mean? But no, he has not been traveling and going out. Um, but I think as a society, whether it's like good or bad, we want to hear the acknowledgement of you did this, you did this, you know what I mean? Suppose. Yeah, so just to let everyone know, this is the reason why I didn't do this out of the other. It's like, nah, 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 nah. Take that walk, nigga. Take that walk. But isn't by acknowledging that this is why X, Y, and Z happened, um, isn't that shame? No. See, this is just all very interesting to me. Like, just the whole, how people want there to be, like, consequences of this has to happen and that has, Like, I don't, you know, I don't agree with it. But, you know. I, I was just wondering because I'm like, just think of Game of Thrones, shame, <laughs> shame through the, through the public square, making the walk to the Red Keep, you know, nude. Yeah, thank you, thank you for that. Is that what a, an amazing show? Um, and this isn't the the podcast for that discussion, but just going down like just like the human psychology behind wanting to see other people be punished, other people be shamed is really interesting to me. Not something I, I, I agree with, but you know, we'll go ahead. We'll jump off of that. Uh, and we'll jump into some questions, some hot takes. Once again, if you guys are watching this, drop your hot takes, drop your questions, drop your opinions inside of the link in the bio, because we're ready, you know, we're ready to pop back at you. Uh, this first one that's, uh, that we're just going to go with, I'm going to actually have CJ answer first. And it's just a statement. It's one statement. <laughs> Charles is overrated. Charles Barkley is overrated. No. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that is a very that's a <laughs> nah shout out to Charles. We, you got love. No, uh Charles Oliver, I don't think he's overrated to me personally. He was on a what, a twelve fight win streak. If you're overrated, that doesn't happen. He has the most subs in UFC history. If you're overrated, that doesn't happen. You were the champion. If you're overrated, that really doesn't happen. So to me personally, he's not overrated. You know what I'm saying? They probably look at his past, the stuff that happens. So, man, and through like I tell people I don't want to get preaching. Through life, you got to go through shit to get through shit. You know what I'm saying? Your downfalls is not what keeps you there. Is when you rise up and get better on that shit. So to me, Charles overrated? Not at all. Guns oh, down on yeah. that one. Hey, fart on those bars. <laughs> Not CJ coming through dropping bars. <laughs> yeah. Black history, my baby. You know how that do. What about you, Jace? Uh, ridiculous statement. There's absolutely positively no way that Charles Oliver is overrated. Um, especially you think about his resume, the people that he went through. You know what I mean? It wasn't, uh, wait, who's this guy? Or is this guy still in the UFC? You know, and that was a knock and people still have that knock on Habib. You know what I mean? With like, 90 percent of his people like you know you can't just name off the top of his head charles and Rivera went through fucking gaichi you know what i mean went through chandler so this thing is overrated for me nah bro yeah i think what this person might be getting at is that charles um probably because he's been knocked down in all of those fights that you mentioned like he did go through the fire inside of all of those you know he had to show that he had a chance and he was getting just popped um but do i think charles Oliver is overrated no this coming from a person who was underrating him <laughs> i was like ah ah don't want to see it and then i was like something about it like and honestly it got to the point to where i was like i could not wait for fight week to see a charles Oliver stare down like the face off the way that he gets in the zone it was just like every single time i thought i was gonna bet against him I would see that face off and be like, oh, he's going to get it done. I called Jace after he faced off with Islam and I was like, Charles is going to get it done. He's going to get it done. He did it. I am not. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. A little, uh, you know, limp dick on prom night. Right. Right. And then we have one, another question coming in, uh, probably more suited for you two, just because I am a new. Uh, do you guys think Kevin Randleman would be successful in today's UFC? Uh, I'll take this um, 100%. I mean, he was, I uh, believe, a national wrestling champion. Um, I think the, I think the only thing that would hold Ken, Kevin Randleman back, the Jamba Juice. Because that boy, ruling was yeah. on the horse meat. Shout out to Alistair Overeem. <laughs> Your boy, I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but no. The muscles on top of muscles. I think he would have done very well, especially in this UFC, especially... Um, with the heavyweights now, I mean, besides, I guess now John Jones and a Curtis Blades, mm -hmm. not the super heavy wrestling base, uh, heavyweights out there. They're knockout artists, which is great. You know, it's more aesthetically pleasing, mm -hmm. but I think we'd have done fine. CJ. Yeah. I think he would have done well. Uh, Randleman was super athletic, super explosive. His grappling and his wrestling is amazing. And, and you got to if you put him in a time like now like if you take him and put him in now his skill set would change a little bit you know what i'm saying back mm -hmm. then they didn't have the same amount of like training and things that were going on so i think he would transition uh very well in today's day and age he's explosive man he fucking suplex fader it was crazy <laughs> dang not you bringing up and uh r.i.p oh. r.i.p to kevin randleman yes Box. Absolutely. Um, and then the last one, to circle it up, it says, if you had the power to create a main event and co-main, who are the fighters you want to see go at it? You are the Enjoy. matchmaker. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got me slipping. <laughs> uh, if I had the power to make a... a man, I think, I, I, I think I'm getting it right now. I, I wanted to see John come back and fight Don. That's Fucking a uh, beautiful fight for me. Charles fighting again. Benny the I I don't I'm high on both of those guys. I want to see them fight, but I don't want to see them fight each other because I like them a lot. But I'm excited for that fight. Shit, I'm not I'm not sure. Sure, I want to see. I don't want to see her fight. 
her again, but I want to see her fight her again. I want to see Valentina fight Amanda again. Woo! What you got, Jace? A main event and a co-main event. Ah, well, that's I'm sorry. So, what was your answer? Shit. <laughs> 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 yeah, hey, listen. Hey, we didn't switch up the rules, nigga. You you missed two I weeks in a row. Do our own thing. Nah, 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 I miss one. Yeah. I miss one. Hey, one's enough. And hey, one's enough. One no part, <laughs> no show. <laughs> well. Y'all know me. I'm never one to shy away. And give See, you, I, you try to answer. you try to set me up and go first so you could think. That's her vacuum. What he did? Me? Never. Come on, man. We hey, <laughs> on some real shit. We gotta stop blaming the black guy here. That shit's played out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for my co-main event, um, as well to add some diversity, I want to see him run it back. I want to see Cyborg go against Amanda. Oh. That's a banger co-main event. You know, I rewatched that fight maybe like yeah. two weeks ago. It took about Four a minute. Seconds. I love that. <laughs> you know, but a lot happened in that minute. I would love to see them run it back. Um, main event. Oh my God. There's so many to choose from. There's so many to choose from. Uh, well, I guess from a financial standpoint, Connor has to be in there. Shit. Hey, as we're, we're running shit back. Let's go. I want to see Carter and Jose again. Run that shit back. Run it back. Uh, cause, because I almost feel like. Oh, so he's not even doing things that's in who's fighting right now. Hey, hey, hey at least I can. Somebody's in a answers. different or. What the hell? At least I I get no a specific more. answer. You know what I'm saying? This nigga living in a mythical world. <laughs> Hey, he's the DC of the pod. Hey, you know how DC always cheating on the show? He be cheating, bro. I'm here giving specific answers and answering the tough questions. The motherfuckers who ain't even fighting no more. Shit. God, fuck damn. You know, we could do this then. I say fucking uh, Connor and Tony, run it. We never got to see it. I've always wanted to see it. Man. Run it. Man. Give my boy <laughs> red panty night. I Let's you go. Love Tony. I do love Tony. Don't do him like that. I think he give Connor some problems. Still, right now. Still, Still. I mean, so like, obviously, we're gonna wait and we're gonna have six months to get into it, you know. But what Connor are we going to see? You know what I mean? Interesting question. Juice to the gills. Juice to the gills. Oh, hey, wait, real quick, because I'm I am gonna answer the question, but since we are talking about. Connor, did you guys see the video of him like uh, standing in front of his jerseys? You know how they have the jerseys in the Apex? Oh, yeah, it's yeah. like shadow boxing, and your boy turns around and he's tired. <laughs> Connor, <laughs> Connor, you're punching the hair. Like, what's going on? I mean, but that's been something to play Connor's entire career. He's always gassed. He is yeah. always gassed out. And you know, thing all thing that met fit shit. You know what I mean? Nigga, you need to drink your own Kool Aid. You know, every. Like, when you fought against Nate, especially the first time, you gave up because you were fucking exhausted. Mm -hmm. You let him tap you out. Yeah. Shout out to Connor. McTappers. Yeah. Uh, if, if I had to have a main event, it would be... I don't know. The power to create a main event. Um, Man, I want to live in the fantasy world, too. Yeah, set me up on Black History Month. That's all we'll let you run it. Or... Listen, listen, we'll let you run it back and you you can do your fantasies. But I really want to see um uh, I really want to see um John Jones and Ghana. That would be my main event cuz I I want to see how he does cuz Cyril might tap him, but he ain't got that he ain't got that uh, sir, do you want me to press the nuclear option? Right, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd want to see that, and and I would want to see, um, uh, it's tough because I feel like we are we have seen a lot of fights that I want to see. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, there's not. What about match fighting somebody? 
Honestly, I hate when Max fights because it really is a bad anxiety. Work any night? <laughs> yes. Oh, wait a minute. That's my main event. I've been telling Jason about this. Yeah, it's give Max Holloway red panty night. Set him up against Conor McGregor. That's my main event. And uh, yeah, that uh, it's get Joe hit back. Yeah. Get his yeah. hit back. We need that. I can dig that. Yeah, yeah. He got we need that. Back. Yeah. At, at 155, though. Not at one. We're not going to try to. We don't want Connor at. Um, what's the border line? Motherfucker would die. Yeah. At 40. Oh, man. Somebody just posted that picture on TikTok of uh, Connor at 45, and he looked like a homeless man, bro. It was crazy. Yeah. It was crazy. Fox, Fox. Yeah. I mean, it does. It, 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 it will be interesting to see, you know, what kind of Connor we get in general. I haven't heard any news that he's entered into the USADA pool. So. Special exemption. Special exemption. Yeah. Hey. If they do that, that's just ridiculous. The double champ gets what the double champ wants. That's what he wants. You know, look at CJ down there. He's so pissed about it. He is so pissed about it. Oh, you know what? I've been looking at like some of the um the upcoming fights that are popping up on that uh the the Izzy and Alex card. Listen, they stack it. They trying to stack that card until there's nothing left. Like, well, they got they, running on that. Uh, let me pull it up because I see. I know it's Izzy, uh, Burns, and Matt at all. Let me ask y'all this: While you're trying to pull the, that up, mm -hmm. uh, who do you think had the best ever in ring post fight speech? Uh, that's really hard. That's what she said. That ah, oh, you you took it before I could. I'm black. <laughs> um, all right, yeah. So looking at this fight card, we got Alex Pereira versus Izzy. We already know what that's about. Gilbert Burns. I keep calling him Burns. I don't know why I keep doing that. Gilbert Burns. <laughs> Jorge Masvidal. English Rob is hard. <laughs> Absolutely, it really is, and it makes no sense. Rob fought Adrian Yanez. That's going to be a banger. I'm calling it. Fight of the night. My boy Adrian Yanez gets it done. Kevin Holland versus Ponzinibbio. That's fight of the night right there. God, I mean, this is a striker's delight. Raul Rosas Jr. versus Rodriguez. Your boy Kelvin. Hopefully he shows up this time, you know. Oh. Who, stop it. Adesanya's son. Um, versus Chris Curtis. I love Chris. Like, this is going to be a bait. Hopefully. It should be. The leech is on here against Michael Chiesa. I'm sorry. I'm still going to keep going. Let's go. Yeah. Like, yep. we're, we're, we're already deep in the prelims. Michelle Watterson um, versus King. Luana. Like, oh, she fighting. Your boy, Chris Barnett. Mr. Swift himself. Hey, big daddy. Big daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Gerald Mearshart versus Joe Piper. You guys know Joe Piper is from the Contender Series. And Dana went on that ramp. Gerald from getting smashed out by cum shot. Whoa. Pause. Uh, Cynthia Calvina versus Loopy, which I'm not gonna lie. Loopy was on the San Diego card, right? Yeah. So was Cynthia too. Cynthia was on there too. Yeah, she fought Nina. Um looking horrible. That that was honestly, and Born. I love I love Cynthia now because we're cool, but that was the worst fight on that whole part. That was the only bad fight that was on that card. Everything else was a banger. Um, and like these last three cards are less well-known people. I, um, I've seen him fight before. He just messed somebody up. The Steve Garcia beat somebody up that, and nobody, I need to go back and look at his, uh, his previous fight. But like, this card is stupid. This card, like, this card is ridiculous. It's it's better than uh 185 and 186. It's definitely better than the London card. Yeah, it's fire. Top to bottom, that's that's we ain't missing out on nothing on that one. They could break this down into multiple fight nights. Facts. Like, I don't even know if us UFC fans even deserve it at this point. Yes, we do. <laughs> You're right. Hundred dollars a year, eighty dollars pay per view. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Um, okay, back to the question. I'm going to ask again. Y'all had sufficient time to think about it. Who has gave the best ever post-fight in-ring speech? Run it. I'm probably be the worst at this because I don't be remembering all that shit. Yeah. yeah. I'm not the, a fucking nerd like that. 
but probably <laughs> would probably be uh, Brandon Moreno when he was just like, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, whatever, whatever. I'll be a champion Come then. On. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, I listen to all that shit, but I don't fucking keep it in my head like that. Go ahead, Jay. Say your no, 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 Sky. Speak. Sky. <laughs> Sky. Let's hear it. I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. <laughs> too. Yep, 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 yep. I'm not surprised. Oh, and then, and then the second one is Conor McGregor. You taking everything? <laughs> you take everything I fucking work for. That's great. That's great. So for me, I love I love the theatrics. You know what I mean. Um, it's very difficult to have a singular one. You know, in my mind, I don't pre-write questions. Just popped in my head, but I'm thinking either you know, there's got to be Connor. Hey everyone, I I know I went a little bit overboard, so I like to take this time to apologize. To absolutely fucking nobody. <laughs> And then you can just go back and run all of tail shit, you know, especially he was into it with Anderson Silva. You know, your boy tried to go in there, uh, Joe Rogan, and and talk to Chell. Hey, so how do you think the fight goes? Listen, I'm going to say this for one time, you know, you, me, Anderson Silva, loser Lee, where he says, you and me, Anderson Silva, if I beat you, you lead the division. If you beat me, I retire. And then just walks out of the ring. He's fucking fired. Yeah. Fucking fire. Mic drop. Ah. I need that. Yeah. Yeah. But it's hard. Yeah. But it's hard not to go fucking Nate. It's Conor McGregor. He's taking everything I fucking work for. I'm going to yeah. fight your ass. Just because, like, you can feel the passion. Like, this nigga really meant what he was saying. He's taking everything I work for. You know, like we can feel that, you know, with just everyday work shit, that vibe, that energy. It's like this punk ass nigga taking everything I work for. Wait a second now. Wait a second. Fuck you. Hey, and you know what? Actually, um, one thing that I didn't realize is that they added Rod Tang to the uh to the mate card for one that uh, CK is gonna be at. I I'm a little jealous about that. Like that's so and the Lutolo Brothers is on there. And yep. Stamp Fairtex on there. Girl, I'm in for a treat. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. that part. Sage Northcutt's on there. Yeah, Sage finally coming back after getting his jaw broke. You know what? I'm going to have to make a video about that because, like, there's, like, a video, you know, like, there's videos of Dana being like, you know, I just don't think that this sport is for him. I think he's going to seriously get hurt, blah, blah, blah. That's why he cut him and let him go. And then, like, his very first fight and won. <laughs> He gets his whole face shattered, and he's been out for four years. <laughs> yeah. I can't uh, believe that it's been that long. Yeah. Time goes by shit, fast. Yeah, fast as hell, because I felt like that just happened. It was like somebody said four or five years. I'm like, damn. Yeah, no, because I remember when, when TJ Dillashaw popped and got suspended, it was like, oh, my God, two years seemed like it was going to be forever before he came back, and then, like, he came and he went, like. And, 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 and. and... Shout out to TJ for being fucking a terrible human. Why you gotta be a terrible human? One, you pop. Two, you go to a fight knowing that you were gonna lose. And I bet money on you, so fuck you. Oh, you're upset that you lost your bet. I told you don't bet against uh and don't, don't bet against you was going for TJ again, you show. Yeah, that's no, crazy. I was going for my money. Hey, uh, you know, uh Jace is a serious Algermain Sterling hater. Or either. Cannot stand the man. So he got he got mad because uh Jan beat him in the head. Like that was his yeah. fault. Listen, That's that bad. might be might IQ. That might be the most used meme from the UFC ever. What, him getting eaten in the head or, no, or rolling well, on the floor? No, him when he's staring at the ref going like <laughs> like <laughs> that shit. Yes, there's always like DC cry, but but Algernon has got his hand oh, raised. Yeah, that's probably the top one. <laughs> Algernon got his hand raised. He's just like looking over, like me. I what? Like I've seen that shit used in so many different times on memes. It's just outrageous. Jace, what's gonna happen? To hold, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do you think they should change that though? Do you think that should have just been a no contest, and the belt should have just been vacated, and then we come back? Again, instead of giving him the belt on that, 
let me i'm gonna let jace take a second to think about it and i feel strongly about this and at first i felt like that's not a way you should win a title so on and so forth but at the same time it was pointed out to me you know that wasn't his first illegal knee that how he lost his first fight how Jan lost his first fight was from an illegal knee you know what I mean? He does a lot of nasty little stuff inside there, but mostly it's because if there's no real repercussion, what stops me from doing it? If I'm losing, I know I need to. I need. I know I need a breath of air, and I poke you in the eye. What? And I know a lot of refs are taking points on the very first time. You know what I mean? Like you might get two pokes in, and then finally they'll take a point. I might kick you in the nuts, knee you in the nuts because I need a break or because you're getting the the better of me. Right or or need someone in the vagina, cause that's a thing, right? That's <laughs> ridiculous. But you know what I mean. So like, if if I know I can do something dirty and foul, and like I'm just gonna get a warning, and I and then I get a, a rest and a break, and I get to get out of this position that I'm not comfortable in, then why why won't everyone do it? If I'm not gonna lose my belt, I'm not gonna be reprimanded. So, yeah, I'm going to knee him in the head. The fight's going to be over. It's going to be a no contest. And I get to fight again for this for this, for this this belt that I just lost. Where's the repercussions? Fair. What do you think, Jace? Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, this is uh, an absolute first on this podcast. Let's mark the date. Let's mark the time. <laughs> Me and Sky actually agree 100%. I have nothing to say. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I disagree with everything I just said. <laughs> it's the first yeah, ever. I think, I think, uh, I think if you throw a knee like that, I don't think Aljo should have got the belt like that, but I don't think Jan should be able to hold the belt like that. I think it should be like, all right, no contest. Nobody wins because Aljo, you didn't win this this contest you know what i'm saying there was a, a legal blow like in wrestling somebody come and hit you with a chair they're like ding 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 you can't win this championship you know what i'm saying so i that's how i feel about it i don't think aljo you don't win yan you don't win so the strap the strap is open right now you know what i'm saying it shouldn't go to somebody who didn't win the fight you know that's just my thoughts so, so it and and right and so like if we did that then i'd be fine with that happening as long as the person who lost the belt that you know through the legal blow isn't allowed to immediately fight for that same belt yeah i can you dig that to, too you need to go I can dig that too. fight because another there has, fight after that yeah yeah you you have to get some fights in after that because because people will just be like because there's some dirty fighters out of there like there's some dirty fighters who just be like, oh, man, like, I'm up against this cage and, like, I can't get away. I can't get out of this clinch. All right, I'm going to knee him in the nuts. Yeah, they're going to reset us, but I can get my hands and get off of this a lot faster and cut the angles than I can from being stuck from where I am now. Like, people do grimy stuff because, hey, they trying to win. It's a fist fight. <laughs> it's a fist fight. Yeah. And if there ain't no rules, hey, <laughs> let's go. Yeah, I can, I can agree with that. Yeah, they shouldn't get an automatic uh, uh, championship fight back because that's that's super dirty. You know, and somebody was saying that, and it was like, that's a low fight IQ. You knew he, where he was. You don't need to go over there and ask your coach, is it okay to throw this knee? You're like, bro, you can clearly see he's on his knees, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you're winning the fight, so why even throw that at that time? Yeah. So you don't deserve to get that championship immediately. Work two fights again and then get your shot back. Well, as it but then the out, guy who lost the fight, uh, no, go ahead. This guy. Oh well, as it turns out, he hasn't got the championship back. So <laughs> exactly, the universe is balancing <laughs> itself. Uh, how do you? <laughs> Jace loves Yon. I do fuck with Yon. He's top five for me. I can see that. Or uh, uh, just even with my top five favorite fighters, I love watching them fight. Yeah. Yeah. Always puts on a show. Always trying to kill somebody, you know. Love how he always takes that first round to just digest things and then just turns it on. You cannot say that and then say that he won the first round against Aljo. Stop. Aljo is garbage. <laughs> he literally garbage. just said he takes the first round to download and then decided that he won the first round. It just make it make sense. 
Aljo's garbage. Cannot wait for cannot wait for the King of Cringe to beat the brakes off of him. Triple C. <laughs> that's probably going to be interesting, but we can talk about that when it comes around. Fair. Yeah. That's, who knows? That's, what, two months? Three months? Yeah. May. Yeah. Facts. Uh, once again, you guys, this was just an advertiser because we are gearing up for UFC 285, John Jones versus Cyril Gaon, Valentina versus Alexa Grasso. Um, next week, it was, I'm sure it's going to be quite opinionated in here. I'm sure Jace is going to have some outlandish prediction that does not happen. Um, oh, wait, you already made a prediction. You, you said that Cyril Gaon finishes John Jones and knocks him out. Yeah. So we'll wait for the final predictions. We'll no, no. Final prediction. CJ, CJ. That- well now you know what we'll give you the carte blanche to wait till it's a uh, fight week of that week you feel me yeah, we that's how we're gonna roll now hey, we have time to download <laughs> new things right you know like for example sky like you said you change your mind with charles so many times just by the stare down and see him go oh this nigga's like he's looking different in his eyes you know oh is this person sucked in is this person like they had a terrible weight cut like all those things come in considerations, you know, before you actually predict a winner. And I stand by my record. I'm never <laughs> picked by wrong. See. <laughs> oh, you're Chelsea. Hey. Not only are you hey, until that Mexican Chelsea. flag comes around. <laughs> undisputed. Uh, yeah. Undisputed. Never lost a minute. Never lost a round. Never lost Let's a go. second. Yeah. Either way. You really be, be liking that wrestling stuff, huh? Them niggas be corny as fuck to me. <laughs> 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 hey, hey! Growing up, Jace thought he was the Rock. Uh, he looked like a nigga that thought he was the Rock. <laughs> I, I can see those running around doing the DX. <laughs> oh, he was on me. I know, I on know. Me. I was in there getting beat up. Anybody else want to jump on me? Body <laughs> slam. Hey, yo, relax, relax, relax. The the, the UFC <laughs> model you know, is based off of the WWE. You know what I mean? The things that we want from UFC fighters, as me and Sky always talk about, tell us a story, make us want to like you and engage you and and, 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 and walk us through someplace. That's what the WWE is predicated on, you know, yeah. is storytelling. The WWE is nothing more than a male soap opera. Yeah. We know it's fake. You know what I mean? We know it's predetermined, you know? But still, they fill up arenas 300 days a year, you know, because people want to watch it. They're intrigued. Storytelling. And once when I think UFC fighters more get that actually down, you know what I mean? Then they will go to that next notch, you know? Yeah, I think it's the the fighters who try to shy away from it, who are just like, oh, I just want to be a mixed martial artist. I just want to be a fighter. Like we've talked about it before. Okay. There are other organizations where that model works. And that's all that they want. Um, I, I think that if you want to be a mega star, you don't have to be disrespectful. You don't have to be nasty. You can be a good guy like Brandon Moreno. Brandon Moreno does extremely well um, with the fans. Um, and just like, even if he posts something, like it's just millions of people, you know what I mean? Like, and he's just a, a nerd who likes to play with Legos, you know? So you don't have to be a bad guy, but you have to be comfortable enough to tell a story, do something, post something. Because you know what? At the end of the day, if you decide to leave the UFC, you have actual fans to take with you. Like we talked about before, and Ganu does not have actual fans to take with him. Uh, We're like uh, Habib does, you know, the worst thing Habib ever said in life was, I'm going to smash your boy. Like that's all he said. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to smash your boy. Yes. (laughs) Left it at that. Well, but they barely speak English. Loved it. Facts. But we will be back. This is this week's episode. We are out. Scrap and roll. Hope you guys are having a good night. And we are out. Peace.